Good morning class, welcome back. Geometry once again, 78 and 79 is what we're gonna look at today. And hopefully you had a great Easter vacation, I did. Did not think about geometry much, but that is okay. The tests, you're probably wondering about the tests. I did score the tests. Uh, now I just need to, to complete the process of getting them to Mr. Troy and he'll pass them out probably be Friday, I guess, so you get them. And at that point, you can look at the tests and the scores and I'll probably do a little video about that test and we'll kind of review it and so on. So that's the plan for today. <coughs> we're gonna look at lesson 78 and 79 and this will need to be done by Friday. We are approaching another test. We'll work on that in the future as well. That'll be after lesson 80. And there goes the bell. We'll do lesson 80 and investigation eight and then do a test. And we are rapidly winding down for the school year. So we'll take that into account here soon as well. I keep promising all this good stuff at the end of the book. Hopefully you're not disappointed, but I'm looking forward to uh, some of the stuff in the back. For now, Lesson 78, we're going to talk about rotations. We mentioned them before. That's a type of transformation where something is turned, taken one place, and rotated. And it's rotated about a point. That is, where is this drawing turning from? So I could have, let's say this is my drawing right here, and I could have it here. And obviously, if I just put it right in the middle, then it's rotating like that. But I could also rotate it from this end over here, and then it will rotate like this. I could actually rotate it from a point way over here, let's say, and if I move it, then it's going to look like that. It's just like, where is the string attached? Uh, you can imagine strings holding this to a point of the rotation, and then it's just rotating around that point. Or if the point is over here on this side, then it's going to go like this. It depends how it goes. So point of rotation. Center of rotation, that's what we talked about. And an important point here, rotations are assumed to be measured as a counterclockwise turn unless otherwise stated. So if it says rotate this eraser 90 degrees about this point, then it's assuming the 90 degree rotation is counterclockwise, which if I'm not mistaken is like this. It's kind of counterintuitive. We would like to rotate them this way, at least I would, but uh, according to, to the book here, rotations are generally normally understood to be counterclockwise unless otherwise stated. So again, if it's here and you're rotating here and it says rotate it 90 degrees about this point, then it would end up coming down like this. So counterclockwise. Again, just the, that blue box, a rotation is an isometry. That means the pre-image and its rotated image are the same shape and size. It does nothing with the size of this image and the shape and so on once after it's rotated. So the pre-image and the image, once it's rotated, they remain the same size. Isometry it's called. All right, there's three <coughs> things. We'll, we'll look at them in the middle, the middle of the page there, uh, mapping notations. Let's pick the middle one, which is if a point X and Y is rotated at 180 degrees about the origin. So let's just imagine that you have a point and it's over here, right here's the point. Uh, let's move it down actually. Can you see? I think you can. Let's move it to right here. And we're rotating this point 180 degrees around the origin, so the origin is the rotational point. In other words, imagine a string attached like this, and you're just rotating. Again, you're going counterclockwise, so you're going 180 degrees this way. Where is it going to end up? Where is this point going to end up? Well, if you just think about 180 degrees, and it is now over here, that means however far this way it is, it's going to be this way, and however far this way it is, going to be this way. Now that's a little bit counterintuitive, but there are maybe. But if you imagine a line, draw a line like this and make this a complete L shape, and then take that L shape and rotate it. When it's up like this, the L shape will look like this. And as it keeps going, it will turn and go down. So this point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hey, I got it. And 1, 2. 1, 2. So right there, I actually didn't try that, but there it is. That point, so I can erase all these things now, and hopefully you can see that connection. And it's maybe not as easy to understand if it's just a point, but here's a point, and this point is rotated 180 degrees about the origin. It's counterclockwise, so it goes like this. You can remember that L shape spinning, so it's down here. Now, they give you mapping notation. <coughs> so let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this point, when it first started, was at six and two, positive six, positive two, six in the x, two in the y, 
where is it now? <coughs> well, after we did the rotation, let's just count. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. But it's a negative direction, so it's negative six in the x and negative two in the y. So if you compare these, it looks like you just took the same x and made it opposite. You took the same y and made it opposite. And if you look at the middle line there where it says, if a point x and y is rotated 180 degrees about the origin, then the transformation mapping is x and y becomes negative x and negative y, which is exactly what we said right here. You keep the same position. The x number stays the same. It just becomes negative or the opposite. So if we, <coughs> if we rotate it, let's try another one. Let's try one right here. Rotate this point 180 degrees. 180 degrees about the origin. That bell, it doesn't ring at all when I'm here earlier. And as soon as I start talking, then it just rings and rings and rings. That's how it seems. Anyway, here's the origin. We're going to rotate this 180 degrees about the origin again. It's counterclockwise. And you can try this little L trick if you want. Go up in here just to see which way it's oriented. If you rotate that, well, 90 degrees is going to be like this. And 180 degrees is going to be this way. So there's the 4 and the 2. It ends up right here. And that makes sense to me because it's going like this. And then it's going like rotates around. Okay, erase these and count and let's see if that makes sense. This point before it started was at negative 2 and it's positive 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 4 in the y, negative 2 in the x. What is it now? Now it is positive 2 in the x. Remember, positive x is this way. So now it is 2 in the x and it is 1, 2, 3, 4 down. So negative 4 in the y. And sure enough, Whatever this was, the number stays the same. The sign changes. It was negative, now it's positive. This one was positive, now it's negative. So that's an illustration. You don't necessarily have to memorize these lines. It also uh, has them listed for 90 degrees about the origin and 270. So you don't necessarily have to memorize them, but you will need to refer to them maybe in the uh, 180 degrees is the, is the symbol one, negative x and negative y. The 90 and the 260, or 270 I mean, is simply here's a point. And we're just going 90 degrees, so just imagine that little L shape just goes up here. 180 is going to end up down here, and 270 is from here all the way around and down. So that's like rotating this point around, and it ends up over here. Whatever this was like this, this is now here. So this is 270 degrees. It's almost all the way around. It's three quarters of the way around back to normal. Trick question in the left-hand margin of page 511. This is Lesson 78. I hope you're there. Lesson 78, page 511. The left-hand margin there in the middle says math reasoning. Formulate. Write a transformation mapping for a rotation around the origin of 360 degrees. And now you think that, that may, you maybe think that's a trick question, but it's asking what is the official mapping notation of taking a point and rotating it 360 degrees and rotating it around the origin. That's the center of rotation. Well, we said for 180 degrees, it was the transformation of x and y becomes negative x and negative y. Whatever the x position, it stays there, but it just sign change. That is for 180 degrees. And again, at the origin. So, and then 90 and 270 are listed. What is 360? Hopefully, you would say that the, if you, if you rotate something 360 degrees, it's going to go back to where it was. That's 360 degrees in a circle, so if you leave wherever, wherever you're leaving, you go 360 degrees around, you're going to end up right back where you are. So the transformation mapping for the 360 degrees of rotation is the transformation of x and y becomes, what do you think it becomes? It becomes x and y. Pretty simple, but pretty basic and profound at the same time. 360 degree rotation, you're going to end up back where you were, so whatever the x was, that's what it is now. Whatever the y was, that's what it is. Again, you don't have to memorize these three lines, but you can work with them. And there'll be lots of graph paper needed. Hopefully you have graph paper. If you don't, make your own. And when we score them, you're going to be looking at pictures up here, and you're going to be looking at your own pictures. And, and if it says, um, it doesn't say it here, but let's say you do need to list the vertices. Maybe just have them listed out or at least labeled on your graph so you can easily read them or see them when we read the scoring. Now, that page is all rotating about the origin. What happens if we have a figure, and I've just been doing dots, but uh, 
we did a figure just for now, let's do a triangle and we put it here, we rotate it about the origin. As long as it's about the origin, it's pretty simple. You just rotate it around. And this one, if we're going to go 180 degrees, it's set over here like this, it'd be upside down because it went around. The more tricky ones are when they're not rotated around the origin. That is, you have a figure here, uh, let's say you have a figure here, and instead of rotating it here, you're going to rotate it from a point down here or something. Which is, you know, here's your point of rotation. What's it going to look like? Well, if you do 180 degrees, it's going to be down here. So it went just like this, and it would be down here, upside down. It doesn't really matter if it's at the origin or not. It's still just rotating wherever the point is. Act like it's on strings attached, and you're just turning it, again, counterclockwise. So page 512. Rotating a figure about a point that is not on the origin can be more difficult. However, for a 180 degree rotation, there is still a simple transformation mapping. Now, I don't know that I'd call it simple, but here it is. The transformation of points x and y becomes 2 times a minus x and 2 times b minus y. And the a and the b are the point of rotation, like what is the center point. Again, you don't have to memorize that, but that is the official transformation, uh, the mapping notation. Or transformation mapping. Look at example 2. This is page 512. So we're going to rotate a point negative 3 and 4, counterclockwise about the point negative 3 and 6, and then we rotate it. Let's actually go to B. I wanted to go to B. So example 2B. There's not a graph to support it, so we're going to do it up here. Rotate the point 7 and 8, 180 degrees around the center of rotation negative 2 and 3. So just draw all that out. First of all, draw the point 7 and 8. 7 and 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's a point, 7 and 8. That's no longer needed. 7 and 8. And instead of rotating it about here, we're going to rotate it about a point that is located negative 3 and 6. So 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, I, what I, was, I was looking at number 1. So this is B is negative 2 and 3. Try again at negative 2 and 1, 2, 3. So we're rotating this point around this one. This stays still, this one goes for a ride. And how far are we rotating it? We're rotating it, this is example 2b, so we're rotating it 180 degrees about the center of rotation. The way I would do it, just looking at this, is again do my little L-shaped thing. In other words, this is the distance away from this point, and we're rotating it. 180 degrees, so 90 is when this is standing up, and 180 is when it's over this way. So this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, that's not 9 from 0, that's 9 from the point of rotation. The x value, where this thing is located, is 9 units away from where it's rotating. This string here, if it's a string or if it's a wire, an L-shaped wire, like this, again, this is the point we're rotating, and this is where it's fixed on. So now you can imagine rotating this kind of angle piece. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this point, when it's 180 degrees, is going to lie, instead of lying 9 to the right of here, it's going to lie 9 to the left of this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this figure uh, point is here. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 5 units up, which means 5 units down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm suggesting that this new point, after it's rotated 180 degrees, is going to be right here, because I've made this line and that line. And let's count it and see where we're at. This is supposed to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is supposed to be 7 and 8. And so this new one now, again, we're referencing it from 0, at least as, as to what the coordinates are. What are the coordinates? They're always from 0, even though you rotate it from here. The coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Negative 11, because it's a backwards, it's a left direction. Negative 11 and negative and then we quickly look at our book and hope that we arrive at the same place and we did. They use the transformation mapping and the bottom line says the transformation of point 7 and 8 becomes negative 11 and negative 2. So I wouldn't memorize that formula. You're not going to use it that often that the transformation of x and y becomes 2a minus x and 2b minus y. I wouldn't memorize that. Just understand this concept of rotating points, you're rotating them counterclockwise, 
unless otherwise indicated, and then how many degrees? Is it 90 degrees? Is it 180 degrees? And where is the point of rotation? Is the point of rotation about the origin? Is it somewhere else? If it's somewhere else, draw that point of rotation. Draw the point that you're rotating. Actually, count the difference. Where's that? Imagine it on a string or imagine it on a fixed rigid piece of wire or whatever you need to do. I like this little L shape because it gives you the X dimension that goes that way. It gives you the Y that goes that way. It's the opposite. And you can check it with the formula if you care to 2a minus x and 2b minus y. And the a and the b are this. So in this case, a is negative 2. a equals negative 2 and, and b equals 3. Because that's the point here. Negative 2 and 3 is the point of rotation. So that's where you get your a and b for that formula. I think that's it. We're going to stop there. Uh, example 3. I say we're going to stop. Let's look at example three. It's not, it's a rotation. Uh, find the angle of rotation that transforms M to move to M prime. And you have to count the spoke arms or whatever. There's 20 of them. So 360 divided by 20 is 18. And then how many of them did it turn? 18 is for each seat position each time it would move one notch, so to speak. 18 times 726. So that's just counting. All right, that's it for that one. Let's go to lesson 79, and this is a short lesson as well. This is back to angles and circles. And we did lots of interior angles, and we started to do some exterior angles. So this is more angles that are exterior to the circle. The exterior of a circle is a set of all points outside the circle. Well, no big surprise there. You have a circle. And there's a center. The interior is the set of all the points. In other words, any all these points in here are the interior. Anything out here is called the exterior. So angles, exterior of a circle. Here's a theorem. The measure of an angle whose vertex is outside of a circle is equal to half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So this is, it's not just talking about an angle out here. So you could say, well, there's an angle that's outside the circle. But it's talking about an angle where the vertex is outside the circle, but the sides go through the circle some form. The measure of an angle whose vertex is outside of a circle is equal to half the difference of the intercepted arcs. We'll draw it out here, just a simple one. This is a circle that's just cutting through. I mean, it's an angle cutting through here. What it's saying is measure or, or find out what this measure is right here and find out what this measure is. And if you know those two measures, you can then figure out what this angle is right here. So let's just guess at this. I don't know what this is. That looks like a little more than 90. So it would be, let's say it's 115 degrees. 115 degrees for this. This one's pretty short. Let's say this is 45 degrees here. 45 degrees for this one. Now what it's saying is find the difference. That is, I'm getting my calculator by the way find the difference. That is 115 minus 45. So 115, we could do this in our head, but who wants to do it in our head? We're going to have a calculator. 115 minus 45 equals 70, and then divided by 2 because of this, or times 1 half. I would just say divided by 2 equals. So this angle right here is 35 degrees. That may not be real intuitive, and you try to figure out how can you memorize that or understand that. Well, just memorize it. Maybe there's, there's ways you could if you, let's see, let's try one. If you do a circle and you make it cut through 180 degrees, and you put it right here, so it goes there, and then 180 down here, there. Well, if you move this vertex in to here, we did this before, where we have a, a dot here and a dot here, and let's say we go through there and go through there, then we know that this angle right here is half of this, which I tried to make this be half of this, so this is 180, and so uh, half of that is 90, which that's what that looks like. I should have maybe started with this. Can you see this far? I think you can. I should have maybe started with this one. So the middle of the circle, we know it's 90 and 90. This is 90, and this is obviously a quarter of the circle, or it looks like it should be pretty obvious. If you go extend it this way and extend it this way, so 90, 90, 90, 90, 360. So 
if you do a central angle, that's what this is called, a central angle, then 90 and 90. If you pull this back to here, then it goes half of this, which is what this one is, and I moved it. Uh, I moved this to 180, so this is 180, this is 90. And then I just went and moved this out a little bit further. Well, the further I move this out, the and I keep these right here, so let's change this one. I should have, since we did this, this is central angle, and this is 180 degrees, and we have the point, the vertex of the angle is right here. Well, that's 180 degree angle, which is otherwise known as a straight angle. So now we move it back to the side right here, and it becomes this one. That takes half of this angle away. It's starting to collapse. We're keeping them right here. It's like they're pinned right here, and we just keep pulling this back. Now, as soon as we pull it back further, the angle is decreasing. This stays the same, and how much is it decreasing by? Well, it's decreasing by this stays 180, and then whatever this is, as this grows, as this angle here gets bigger, the, the further you pull this back, the more of this circle it's going to take out, which is where you get this 180 minus this amount, and then half of that. So it's just like 180 minus this amount that it's intercepting, which in this case is 180 minus 0, and then half of that 180 is 90. So that's what this is. As soon as you pull it out half, you got to take this amount off, and then you're still like finding the average. So 180 minus this amount, and then half of that is what this angle is. I don't know if this progression helps to go from center, then pull it to the end, and then pull it past the end outside, and you start to get this. If not, then just memorize this uh, formula that is one half of this bigger measure minus the smaller measure. There's always going to be a bigger measure. So take the bigger measure and subtract the smaller measure off of that, and that, that gives you the difference, and then find half of that difference. In other words, take it times one half. That applies to this, that's a secant, that applies to tangents, it applies to combinations thereof. So look at example one, uh, saying prove it, but we're not going to prove it, we're just looking to see, no, let's not look at that one, let's look at, uh, so example 2a, is find the measure of angle E. My book is torn up, but I think angle E is that vertex there. It has to be. You've got a 49 on one side, and you've got 13 on the other side. So 49 minus 13 is what? 36, I guess. And then half of that is 18, so the measure of that angle is 18. And it applies to tangent lines. So look at example B. That is, if I took a line and went just touching tangent and touching tangent there, then it's still this amount minus this amount times one half. So in the book it gives you, and this time they try to be tricky, they only give you 110. So they're saying this is 110 right here, it's 110 degrees to this, and you say, well, what is this? Well, since it's tangent, and this is a bad drawing, but this amount is touching to its tangent here and here, that's 110, here to here, then the rest is whatever else, so 360 minus 110 will get you this amount. So then you take that amount and subtract 110 off of it, so 360 minus 110 is 250, so 250 minus 110 is 7, is uh, not 70, is 140 I guess, yeah. 250 minus 110 is 140, and then half of that is 70. The measure of an angle whose vertex is outside of the circle is equal to half of the difference of the intercepted arc. Half of the difference. Find the difference, find this, get this measurement, get this measurement, find the difference between those two measurements, that is this minus this, and then find half of that, and that is the angle of that measure. That is the whole lesson, really. And we will let it at that. So, your homework is um, as follows. Homework for lesson 78. Lesson 78, homework is 1, 5, 6, 11, 13, 19, 21, and 24. Lesson 79, homework is 1, 3, 8, 12, 17, 21,
21, 22, 27, and 29. And, I'm not quite done. This is your homework plus one more thing. And this next thing is a question that I want you to answer just off the cuff. So please don't use any calculating. Don't use your calculator. Don't even try to think in your head. Don't try to run any calculations in your head. I just want a response off the cuff. And it's hard to do in a video format. I'd rather you be here in, in the class and then we could do it. But what you're going to do is I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to respond instantly with a text message or WhatsApp or something. And I'd rather you do it in a way that is not um, show, does not show the other class mates. So WhatsApp it privately if you can. Just send it to me, your answer. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a measurement. Your answer is gonna be a measurement. It's gonna be how many inches. So your answer is gonna be, and I'll tell you what the question is soon, but your answer is gonna be three inches or 159 inches or whatever. And just instantly, um, I just want to do this for just for fun. But when I ask you the question, just make a split second decision. The video closes and you text the number to me and do it without the others seeing so that you're not influencing other people. And then whoever gets it, when they get it, they can send it to me. I want everyone to contribute. Again, your answer is going to be in inches and how many inches is something. Um, and then we're going to pick it up on Friday. So you have this homework, this is due on Friday, and then you have this other question I'm going to ask you, and it's due five seconds after the video is done. So here's the question. Um, I guess it's clear what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to answer this question and send it, send your answer to me. Do not calculate in your head. Do not calculate with a calculator. Do not look around. Do not measure if you have this item in your possession. Currently, do not even look at it. Throw it away quick. I don't know if you do, but the question is, what is, this, what is the circumference of a standard men's basketball? What is the circumference of a, 